Hello, and welcome to our lesson on business applications of extrema. So we know that when we are finding extrema, we are looking for maximum and minimum values, and we know how to use our first derivative test to find those. So we're going to apply that process of finding extrema to still find maxes and mins, but in a business application, it means we're going to be trying to find the maximum or minimum cost or revenue or profit or something that, you know, relates to business. So the process of finding extrema can be applied to business um, in that we are going to be maximizing, finding the maximum of or minimizing finding the minimum of, minimizing, sorry, uh, cost, revenue, or profit. Again, our extrema are going to be occurring at critical numbers of our first derivative, which means, <coughs> excuse me, they're gonna make that first derivative either zero or undefined, okay? Now, <coughs> excuse me, all of these functions we have talked about before, but just to refresh the memory, uh, demand function is relating the price, which we're using lowercase p for, um, with the number of units that we're selling or producing with the business that we're looking at. So it's price as a function of x. Uh, same for cost. Um, so cost is written in terms of the number of units that are be so being sold or produced as well. So cost as a function of x. And then revenue is a total amount of money that's generated. So you take the price per unit, multiply it by the number of units. Again, that's gonna give you your total revenue. And then profit is what you earn after you take the cost away from your revenue. So your revenue is all the money that's being generated. Subtract out your costs, whatever is left over becomes your profit. Now, because revenue we said could be the price times the number of units, in this box here, we can replace R with X times P. So we have two different versions of our profit formula. I think so far we've just seen this one, um, but we can add this to the toolbox as well, okay? Now we might also be asked to find a max or min or maximize or minimize an average cost or an average profit or an average revenue. So if we are finding an, that's my highlighter, um, if, if we need to find a max or min for an average cost, revenue, or profit. We are gonna get that cost, revenue, or profit average by taking the function itself and dividing by X, which hopefully makes sense. For instance, if you went to the store and you spent 100 bucks on, let's say, 20 different items, you could divide the 100 by 20 and say, okay, the average cost per item was $5, right? So that's the concept here. If we take our cost and divide it by how many items we buy, or take our profit and divide it by how many items you know we, we buy or sold or whatever, same for revenue, then we get our average. So each of these, the C with the bar over it, P with the bar over it, R with the bar over it, that represents the average cost, profit, revenue. So that little bar above the R, the P, the C, that's average. So you take the function you're given, divide it by X. Take the profit you're given, divide by X, take the revenue you're given, divide by X, and so on. Okay, so we might see those that uh, new version of the formula come up. Let's look at a few examples. For instance here, it says a company has determined that its total revenue in dollars for a product can be modeled by that cubic function, so R equals, that's revenue, um, where X is the number of items that's produced and sold. We're trying to find the production level, that's how many X's are we gonna produce and sell, um, that are gonna yield the maximum revenue. So we're looking for the maximum of our revenue function, which means we're gonna find its derivative, find the critical numbers, and figure out which one of those is our maximum. So let's start by differentiating. Our prime would be a negative three X squared plus 900 X plus 52,500. And I can't make this undefined, but I can definitely figure out where this thing is equal to zero. I'm gonna first divide everything here by that negative three. So I'm trying to solve x squared minus 300x minus 17,500 equal to zero. Odds are that's factorable, um, but I'm gonna see if I can use the quadratic formula. Delete all this. Uh, quadratic formula to solve because I don't know how long it's gonna take me to attempt to factor that. So the quadratic formula is negative b, so that's 300, 
And then it's plus or minus. I can't put both here, so I'm just going to choose the positive first. Square root of b squared, so negative 300 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 17,500. And that gets divided by 2 times a and 2 times 1, which is going to be 2. So I get 350. And if I change that positive to a negative, then the other ends up being a negative 50. That means that this is going to factor into an x plus 50 and an x minus 350. So negative 50 is an answer. Positive 350 is an answer. So uh, it's a little cheating for factoring there. But um, just so that I didn't have to write all the quadratic formula work down. But hopefully you followed what I did. So we've got two solutions now. One of those solutions is not going to apply for this problem. It does not give us a domain, but our x's in this case represent the number of units that are produced and sold. I would say that those x's have to be, got to be greater than zero. X's have to be greater than zero. So even producing zero units or selling zero units, not really applicable for a company. They have to sell something to, to generate uh, revenue. Okay, so we're going to kick 50 out of this. It's not in the domain. Even though a domain wasn't specified, we can say that the x's have to be bigger than zero for sure. So we've only got one answer left, which means it's going to have to be the answer to our problem. But just to be thorough with our work, if there were multiple, remember what we're doing is we're testing before and after that critical number to figure out if we have a max or a min. Now clearly it's going to be a max here, but again, just to be thorough. So if I plugged in, let's say, zero to my... Um, derivative of my revenue, so r prime of 0, I'm going to end up with 52,500. That's positive, which means here we are increasing. And then if I plug in something here, let's say r prime of 351, then I got to do a little work on the calculator. So 351 squared 900 times 351 and then plus 52,500, so negative 1,203. So that, that being negative means this is decreasing. So we're going from increasing to decreasing, which means we have our maximum. Okay, so what production level is going to yield a maximum revenue? If we produce 350 of these x's, right, x equals 350, then revenue will be at its max. So uh, producing 350 units yields the maximum revenue. And if you worded that differently, that's totally fine. There are lots of different ways you could say what I said there. Um, now that's how many units would be um, sold or produced in order to get to that maximum revenue. If I actually asked you to find the maximum revenue, remember when we were finding our extrema, we could be finding the x value, could be the finding the y value, could be the coordinate. Um, the y value would be the actual maximum revenue. So if I took that 350 and plugged into my revenue function, I could figure out what that max revenue is. And again, just to be thorough, I'm going to go ahead and do that. If I plugged in 350 into r, I'm going to get my maximum revenue. So I have a negative 350 to the third power plus, I said plus, 450 times 350 squared plus 52,500 times 350, and there's my maximum revenue. So this would be $30,625,000 um, is the max revenue. Okay, so it doesn't ask in this problem, but if you needed to find it, just remember to keep straight what you're getting with each part of the answer. So when you find an x value, that's generally going to be the number of units. If you actually have to find the revenue or the profit or the cost or the average of one of those, whatever, you're going to have to plug back into your function. All right, so let's try another one. A company estimates that the cost of producing x units of a product can be modeled by this quadratic cost function. Find the production level. Again, how many things are produced. That's find x. That minimizes the average cost. So we're given the cost function, but since we're minimizing the average cost, we're going to have to find the derivative of the average cost function. So our average cost 
That's going to be our C with the bar over it. That's take the cost function and divide by x. So take the 800 plus 0.04x plus 0.0002x squared. Again, divide it all by an x. So average cost is, well, 800 doesn't divide by x, but I can divide by x in the second term, and I can divide out an x in that third term. So there it is. Now I want to take the derivative of this. So I'm actually going to rewrite this first term as 800 x to the negative first. That will just make differentiating slightly easier. All right, so now I'm ready. Let's take the derivative of this average cost so I can find my minimum that I'm looking for here, my extremum. So this will be a negative 800 x to the negative second. The derivative of the constant goes away. Plus we're gonna have that 0 0.0002 left over. And I wanna find out my critical numbers for that derivative. So where does negative 800 x to the negative second, which is over x squared, plus the 0 0.0002, which is what, one out of 5,000? Uh, where does that equal zero? Now, I made the 800x to the negative second a fraction and the decimal a fraction because this is gonna be easy for me to solve if I, if I can make a proportion. So I'm gonna add this term over. So I have one over 5,000 equal to negative 800. Nope, becomes a positive 800 when I add it over over x squared. Again, now I have a proportion really easy for me to solve by just cross multiplying. So cross multiply, cross multiply, those cross products have to be equal. So x squared has to equal 40, and that would be what, one, two, three, four, five more zeros. Take the square root of both sides. And so I have x equal to, it's gonna be a positive negative, the square root of, it's gonna be, should be 2,000. Let's see, one, two, three, yeah, six zeros. So half of those. So 2,000 now. Again, a negative 2,000 not going to apply here. It doesn't give us a domain, but if we're looking at producing X number of units, we know that they're gonna be producing more than, more than zero of those, right, for this problem to have any application. So we're gonna go with just the 2,000. And we can also make this derivative undefined if X is equal to zero, but we're not gonna count that in our domain. Okay, so let's Go ahead, and I mean, again, that, that leaves us with just one number, so I know what the answer is going to be here, but just to be thorough in our work, if I was testing, I'm gonna go before 2000, I don't wanna pick zero because I know it's gonna make this undefined, so let me just pick like one, okay? If I go, not revenue, this one is average cost at one, and let's go at 2001, and we should end up with a decrease to increase to get the minimum that we know we're looking for here. So at one and at 2001, we have, let's see, negative 800 divided by, right, this is silly, I don't really need to put one squared in there because I know it's gonna be one. And then we're gonna add one over 5,000. So that ends up being almost negative 800 Let's just say almost negative 800. So that's definitely negative. This is definitely decreasing. And then if I change this to a 2001, then it's the only place to put in a variable, right? Uh, so it's a really small decimal, but it's positive. And can't make that a fraction. No. So I'm just going to say positive because I don't want to copy that all down, which means this is gonna be increasing. So decreasing to increasing gives us the minimum that we knew we were looking for here. So what production level is gonna minimize the average cost? So producing, uh, producing 2,000 units minimizes the average cost. And if I wanted to find what that minimum average cost was, then I would have to plug the 2000 into my average cost function, and I could figure out that piece. But it doesn't ask, so let's not draw this out any more than we have to. So there it is, there's the answer to that one. All right, the next one, I think gets a little trickier because we've got to come up with some equations ourselves. but let's take a look and see how we do.
So example three, a business sells 2,000 units of a product per month at a price of $10 each. It can sell 250 more items per month for every 25 cent reduction in price. And the question here is, uh, what price per unit is going to maximize their monthly revenue? Okay, so how do we maximize the monthly revenue? Well, let's try to wrap our brains around this. Okay, so if we want to maximize the monthly revenue, that means we're going to have to be finding a derivative of the revenue function. So let's think about what revenue is. We know it's going to be the profit minus the cost. Um, but in this case, oh sorry, that's profit. <laughs> Silly. Uh, revenue is just the number of units that we produce times the price. There we go. So revenue is, is x times p. Okay, How many units do we sell? x times what is the price? Now in order for us to differentiate, we need to be in a function in two variables, not three. And so I'm going to have to use the other information that's in this problem to try to get rid of one of these variables. Now the other information is all related to price. So let's try to write a price function. Okay. So it says here that 2,000 units produced, uh, business sells 2,000 units of a product per month at a price of $10 each. Okay, So I'm going to write this as a coordinate. Then I can use coordinates to write an equation for my price. Okay, So it's 2,000 units at a price of $10. So that's x and that's the price. Okay, And remember, my price function has to be in terms of x. And that's why I'm doing this as well. Now it says they can sell 250 more items if there's a 25 cent reduction in price. So as a second coordinate, 250 more would be 2,250. At a 25 cent price reduction would be instead of $10, $9.75. So again, this gives us another x and another p. Well, now that I have two points, I can find the slope and use the uh, one of the points in that slope to write an equation for my price. So I'm going to say m equals y minus y or y2 minus y1, so 9.75 minus 10 over x2 minus x1, so 2250 minus 2000, and that's going to end up being point negative 0.25 over 250, which will be a negative 0 0.001. Um, the decimal fraction, if you'd like to fraction better, but in my head that's just making more sense. So there's that. Now I'm going to use that slope, and I'm going to go with the first coordinate here. So here's my m, here's my x1, here's my y1. So I'm going to say y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, and then this is, um, and actually, just to be thorough here, instead of y, we're dealing with p, so I'm going to call this p. So p minus 10 is going to equal, distributing makes a negative 0.001x, and then a positive uh, 1 1,000th one of 2, that's going to be 2, I'm trying to do math in my head, and then I'm going to add that 10 over, which means we have negative 0.001x uh, plus 12. And there we have a price function based on the information that was given to us. Now remember, revenue is x times that price. So I need a different color for this. I already used red. So we're going to maximize this monthly revenue. Revenue is x times p. And we just said that p is negative 0.001x plus 12, which means my revenue could be represented by this quadratic, negative 001x squared plus 12x. And if that's what I want to maximize, that's what I need to differentiate and find the critical numbers for. So now, I'm running out of colors. Our prime, that's too close. Let me get a custom color here. Give me a second. Okay, so now r prime is going to be a negative 0 0.002 times x to the first plus a 12. And I want to figure out where this is going to be undefined, can't happen, but where is it equal to 0? So where does negative 0 
2x plus 12 equals 0. Well, I'm going to subtract the 12 over and divide, and negative 12 divided by negative 0 0.002, that's going to be 6,000. So 6,000 is going to be our x value. Now, does that answer the question? So what is the price per unit that's going to maximize the monthly revenue? So right now I know the 6,000 is the number of units that are going to be sold to maximize the revenue. And if I wanted to find the maximum revenue, I could plug that into my revenue equation. But this asks for what price is going to maximize that revenue. What price per unit? So I'm going to take the 600 and plug it in over here to, to my price equation. So negative 0 0.001 times 6,000 plus 12 is going to get me that answer. So this should be a negative 6 plus 12, which is going to be six bucks. So if they charge, this business charges six dollars for their things they're selling, whatever these units are, it will maximize the revenue. So selling or a price of six dollars per unit will maximize revenue. Okay, so you need to be really careful to make sure that you're reading the question um, carefully so that you're answering the question properly, if that makes sense. All right, we've got one last one. Again, a situation where we're going to try to maximize profit. It says that the marketing department for um, a business has determined that the demand for a product can be modeled by P equals 50 over the square root of X and the cost of producing the X units is given by that linear function. What price is going to yield a maximum profit? So we need our uh, profit function to be maximized. I need to find the derivative of our profit function. Now remember profit, this is what I was jumped ahead of myself on the last one. Um, profit is the revenue, all the money that's generated minus the cost. But I don't have anything here about revenue, but I do have P. And remember, revenue is X times P. So I'm going to use that version of the equation instead. So it's X times P minus the cost. So in this case, X times P they give us is 50 over the radical X. And then I want to subtract out the cost, which they give us as point, uh, 5x plus 500. And now I have an equation for my profit. And I just want to clean this up a little bit before I take the derivative just to make my life a little easier when I do that. So remember, this is x to the 1 half here. I'm going to move it to the top of the fraction. So really, I'm dealing with x times 50x to the negative 1 half. Distribute this negative, so 0.5x here and the negative 500 here. And then if I multiply these, I'm going to add those exponents. So a negative 1 half and the positive 1 is going to leave me with 50x to the positive 1 half. And now that I have these three separate terms, super easy to find my derivative. So p prime is going to be half of 50 would be 25x to the 1 half minus 1 is going to be negative 1 half. This will just be a negative 0.5, and the derivative of the constant goes away. So where does that equal zero? Um, so this is, where does 25 over x to the 1 half on the bottom becomes a positive square root of x. Uh, and then I have a minus 0.5, which is a minus 1 half. Where does that equal zero? So I'm gonna do the same thing I did on the last one. Let me just move this up here where I made uh, both of these fractions because this is really easy to make a proportion and then a proportion is really easy to solve. So if I add the 1 half over, I can cross multiply. And again, those cross products, they're going to have to be equal. So we're going to say square root of x is equal to 25 times 2 is 50. And then we're going to square both sides to get rid of that square root. And so x is going to be equal to 50 squared is going to make 2,500. Okay, so 2,500 is the number of items they will have to produce in order to maximize the profit. But again, this asks us for what price is going to yield that maximum profit. So I have to plug 2,500 into my price equation, which 
thankfully was already given. So the price is going to be 50 divided by the square root of x, so the square root of 2500. The square root of 2500 is 50. We just did that. So 50 divided by 50 is a dollar. Okay, so if they sell their items, their products for a dollar, they will maximize their profits. Right, price of one dollar maximizes profits. Boom, done. Okay, so I haven't showed you like every single example that I could possibly show you, but I think I have given you enough. Um, the, the concept is to make sure that you're looking at what you're maximizing or minimizing, what you're trying to find the extremum of. Um, that's the function you need to focus on writing. And if that function is given to you, awesome. But as you've seen in the three of the four cases here, we had to do a little bit of work to come up with our function. Um, and then at the end, after you find your derivative, you find your max or your min, just make sure you're, you're answering. Sometimes that actual x value is your answer, but sometimes you have to plug back into something else. Okay. So I think you got enough to get going on your assignment, but as always, if you need some extra help, just let me know. Until next time, take care.